Your content is funny, but meh points for commentary. What? Right, you've asked for it now. For this episode of Top 10 Epic Kills, I'm going to be Sunlight the Rhyme Master. Let's begin at number 10. Sunbrazer guards the Archdragon Bridge. With a Dragon Slayer Great Bow, he stands on this ridge. Along comes a host with his Dark Moon in tow. With one single arrow to their death, both shall go. At number 9, the host loses his lifeline. His white summon dies, however, be prepared for a surprise. How does his magic start up that fast? Yo! Yo! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> Yorm the Giant, normally beaten with the Storm Ruler. However, this method by far is much cooler. By stacking buffs, you can acquire high damage, much more in fact than Yorm can manage. Also joint place for number 8 are these phantoms who cooperate. Yorm dies from throwing knives. They certainly hinder this weak Lord of Cinder. This walker invades deep in Lothric Castle where he soon realises that two Sunbros are a hassle. One against three does not seem quite fair, yet he does not despair. He grows a pair, walks up some stairs, then a ladder, and onto the roof. From high above, he watches the trio progress. I'm sure he's questioning his chances of success. Those warriors of sunlight did not watch the skies. The host sadly let down by both his allies. Back in Archdragon Peak, an ancient wyvern attacks. Hungry Lasagna has discovered some hacks. Normally, a great journey around the area is necessary. With the dragon constantly blowing fire, it can be quite scary. But all of that can be missed by running past the great beast and avoiding the tail needs the slight elevation and he will prevail. <laughs> I have never seen that before, yet it clearly saves time. So would it be useful for speedrunning? That is what's on my mind. Next up is a gang's pack. This host has been flanked by three invaders. Maybe it's just a prank. Actually, no, it's looking quite serious. They're getting out of hand, yet always remember, a house divided cannot stand. A double parry ends the blues. I think that Red Invader's been, been on the booze. <laughs> he destroyed his teammate with a mighty thrust. Two things were lost here, health points and trust. The other rolls away with one health remaining. One thing's for sure though, his death is entertaining. It's not often you see perfected game mechanics. This invader here making the host and summon panic.
These running predicted backstabs involve quick timing and the wake up jabs just keep the pressure climbing. The host is backstabbed and can't roll anywhere but into his swing. And so the pair are slain by a parry king. Another PvE clip involving Gundir's humiliation. I Hardly Try Hard fights him using no gear for the duration. Now what makes this incredible is it's new game plus 7, the hardest it can be, and he fights him using only his fists as you can see. The challenge includes no healing at all, and there's even a harder aspect to this brawl. Every parry is done with a 720 spin from behind, followed by the hey gesture combined with a praise the sun after every riposte. There's just no way this guy could have lost. Odd Starva and Top Waifu are attempting to make history. In the Cathedral of the Deep, they're solving a mystery. That was insane. And I have some observations. This greatest shot in the world required a lot of patience. At this huge distance, characters are invisible, so the use of poison to see his target was critical. Aiming at a moving health bar alone is not easy, yet he sniped him with his very first attempt, very cheeky. Arrows over such a distance in fact do no damage. It was instead the crossbow that managed to strike the poor fellow for 270 the great bow shot itself was airborne for two whole seconds before hitting the enemy. And we arrive at number one. This time it's the boss, Pontiff Sullivan. Kami's studied this boss for three months, allegedly, and has come up with the perfect strategy. Incredibly, he's memorized all of its attack patterns and the most likely outcomes. By forcing the boss into specific situations, he can predict what it will do without complications. Although, saying that, he does get hit once or twice, but I suppose not every guess can be as precise. Sometimes he manipulates the moveset by reposting with different weapon sizes. Small weapons change Pontiff's moveset after he rises. Then, location plays an important part. Knowing where to stand, have to learn that off by heart. Oh yeah, and forget the rhyming for a second, he did all this at Soul Level 1 on New Game Plus with completely unupgraded weapons. Just how do you even do this? Don't understand. But congratulations man, that is so good. Well, what do you think about that then, eh? Some of those rhymes were questionable, but you know, it's the thought that counts. Genuinely though, I must say, the submissions this week were unreal, I thought. Such a tough time picking the top 10, because realistically, it was a top 50 I had to cut down, so cheers for that. Uh, next episode is going to be something stupid. I want top 10 crazy lag moments. You know, latency, horrible connections and stuff like that. I got this idea because some some guy sent me a clip of him getting backstabbed by a host who kept falling down a cliff during the backstab animation. I find people's lag amusing, alright? It, it makes me feel better. <laughs> Don't judge me. 
Details for that will be in the description below. I've just thought I probably sound weird compared to normal, but I've just handed in a deadline, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Getting there, getting towards graduation, it's just a couple more months to go. Come on all the students graduating this year, we can do it together. Please check out all my other top 10 videos, there's a playlist you can click on and that'll be good. Cheers, I'll see you in a bit.